this anatomical location is very very important. The third anatomical point which you should be aware is normally the kidney is about 10 centimeter long, 5 centimeter wide and 3 centimeter thick. Coming to the nerve supply, it is supplied by both sympathetic as well as parasympathetic. The sympathetic comes from gator and lesser spanic nerve through T8 L1 and then goes into celiac and the iotorenal ganglion. From there, postganglionic fiber arises and supplies the kidney. The parasympathetic comes from the dorsal motor nucleus of the vagus as vagus nerve. And what is very important here is the pain fibers travel from T8 L1. Therefore, the pain is going to be radiated to lower back, flank, ilioinguinal region and scrotum in male and labia in female. Coming to the physiology, normal kidney receives about 20 to 25 percent of cardiac output which is roughly around 1.25 liters. Out of this 1.25 liters, 80 percent goes to cortical nephrons and 20 percent goes to medullary nephron. So, ischemic injury is more prone for medulla nephron. Another important aspect is autoregulation of renal blood flow. With the mean arterial pressure between 80 to 180, the renal blood flow is not altered much. The mechanism behind maintaining this autoregulation is two things. One is myogenic and another one is tubulogromular feedback. Coming to the physiological functioning of the kidney. The first and foremost function of the kidney is urine which is nothing but the excretion of waste products from plasma. This waste product are excreted as from the plasma as urine and excreted through the kidney. The other important function is protein catabolism. As an anesthesiologist, we are worried about this three function. Fluid and electrolyte balance, regulation of acid base balance and third important thing is metabolism and excretion of various drugs. This three kidney functions will have widespread implications in the perioperative period. Apart from that, secretion of various hormones are done by kidney. Now coming to the fluid acid base and electrolyte balance. Here this is the glomerular capillary and the Bowman space and this is the loop and this is the peritubular capillaries and this is the efferent arteriole and this is the efferent arteriole. Now this kidney maintains this fluid electrolyte balance with this four steps. First is nothing but filtration which happens at the Bowman space. Then the filter space enters into the loop of Fendley and most of the filtered volume will be reabsorbed at the loop of Fendley between the exchange between the loop of Fendley and the peritubular capillaries and certain ions are, uh, will be excreted at the distal part. So, some amounts get reabsorbed, some get secreted. This is a counter current mechanism which happens between the tubal and the peritubular capillaries and finally the fourth step is the remaining gets excreted at the distal collecting tubal. These are the four major steps filtration, reabsorption, secretion and finally excretion and how much fluid is getting reabsorbed. Here you can see in the Bowman space 100 percent filtrate is being produced. So, how much comes as urine? In the proximal tubule, around 80 percent gets reabsorbed. There is an active and passive absorption happens in the proximal tubule. So, 80 percent is already reabsorbed in the proximal tubule. Then comes the loop of Fendley where 6 percent is reabsorbed. Here, the mechanism is going to be water and salt conservation. The third is going to be the distal tubule. Here another 9 percent filtrate is reabsorbed. Here the reabsorption is variable and there is active secretion of few electrolytes. Finally, in the collecting tubule, 
another 4 percent is reabsorbed by variable salt and water reabsorption. So, you have 100 percent filtrate which is produced and 99 percent is reabsorbed. 